you're a reception or a kindergarten teacher looking for some fresh inspiration for your phonics lessons, or if you're a parent looking to be able to support your child with phonics better at home, then you've come to the right place. By the end of this film, you will have two really simple, really effective games that you can play to support your child or children with blending and segmenting, which is a key phonic skill. For more than a decade, I've trained thousands of practitioners, teachers and parents in how to teach phonics and early reading spectacularly well. And on this channel, I'm sharing heaps of phonics games, reading activity ideas and top tips with you. So subscribe to my channel to add a bit of sparkling to your phonics and early reading teaching and don't forget to click the bell to be notified for new videos every single Thursday. So when children are learning phonics they're learning two things. They're learning the match between letters and the sounds that they make. So that this is a C and it makes the sound K and this is an A and R and together they make the sound R but they're also learning what to do with those letters. So they're learning to spell using those letters and the sounds. So um, let's write the word sheep. Sh e sheep, sheep. So to be able to write that word, the children have had to segment it, they've had to break it up into all those separate spoken sounds. Sh, e, sheep. So they have to learn how to segment a word to spell, but also they need to be able to read that word without these lines and these buttons here. So they need to be able to see this word instead of going sh, or S H E E P, we want them to look at this word and say sh, e, sheep and that's called blending for reading. In this session we're going to play some games to look very much at how to blend and segment to be able to read and spell whole words. If you want to know more about how to recognise the letters and the sounds that they make and how to say those correctly then this video here is absolutely for you. It gives you all of the information that you need about that. Blending and segmenting are skills. So they take loads and loads of practice, a bit like learning to ride a bike or drive a car. You have to have done it lots and lots of times to be good at it. And it's quite different from learning to recognise the letters and sound correspondences, because a lot of that just depends on memory. So because we're needing to practice and practice and practice this skill of blending and segmenting over and over again, we've got to try and find exciting and engaging ways to be able to do that with children, otherwise they'll just get really bored. And one of my favourite resources is this robot. So I made this a really long time ago in the classroom. I use him all the time. So it's just basically a photocopy paper or a printer paper box that is covered in paper with a face on the top and some antenna at the top made out of um, pipe cleaners. And what I really like about him is there's lots of different ways. He's quite versatile. The children really like him. And the reason that I picked a robot to start with is that when we start to orally really blend and segment with children, we um, have to break down the words for them to be able to hear, hear them correctly. And one of the ways, the strategies that we can do is to say words like cat, k, at, sounds a bit robotic, or sheep, sh, e, sheep. So oftentimes that's a really good strategy to be able to help children to be able to hear those separate sounds in words to encourage them to talk a bit like a robot. That can help them to make sense of the blending and segmenting, breaking down those words. And that using a robot like this then seemed to me to be a kind of a, a bit of a next step really on from that. And I use him in all kinds of different ways, not least to be able to use post-it notes and put them in his mouth to be able to read the words. So here's an example of what this might look like if I'm working with a small group to teach the E making the E sound or the E phoneme. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce different letters either side of the E making the E sound to make new words. And we're going to read them all together. So the children are going to join in with me saying P, E, G, Peg. And then I'm going to switch in with different post-it notes to make different words, pet, pet, for example. And we're going to join in, carry on joining in all together, t, e, n, t, n, ten, so that the children can see that the 
E is still there making the X sound, but we can make different words with it. So that's what this might look like in a small group. This might not be so achievable if I was working with a really large class of children. So have a look now, there's some slides that follow exactly the same process of blending, just using PowerPoint slides. robot can really help children to be able to blend to be able to read and now we're going to look at how a robot like this can help children to be able to spell because blending for reading and segmenting for spelling are exactly the same process but in reverse so if children can read this ch it chip when I make it if I then say to the children right okay I would like you to make the word chip what we want them to be able to do when they're segmenting is we want them to be able to spell the word. So they've read it, we want them to be able to say, mm, ch, it, chip, chip, chip. So we need them to be able to break that word down into segments to be able to spell it themselves. So when they're blending, they're reading somebody else's letters. When they're segmenting, they're making the word for themselves. We need to remember to do oral segmenting first, which means Practice it in our brains and with our mouths first before we even introduce any of these letters. And if you want to learn more about oral blending and segmenting, this film is perfect. It tells you all about why children need to learn to orally blend and segment and gives you some top activities to try with your class. But let's just assume that these children know all these letter sound correspondences. How am I going to teach them to be able to make that word? Well, it will be a massive jump to say, right, okay, you've read the word chip, now can you go and write it? I want to build up to that. So the first thing that I want to do is practice with the oral blending and segmenting. I want to say, mmm, chip. How would I write chip? And really get the children to think about the sounds that are in that word, the spoken sounds that are in the word, the word, the phonemes that they can hear. So chip. We might count on our fingers, ch, ip, chip. We might clap with our hands, chip, ch, ip, chip. We might use our robot arms, ch, ip, chip. Or we might count out, stretch the word out, ch, ip, chip. We might do it that way. And once we've worked out what the word sounds like, then we can work out which letters we need. So ch, ip, chip. And we need to always remind children to start from the left. That's a really important point to note because not always do children know that. And the reason that we've got a grid here is it helps the children to be able to match those spoken sounds that they've just counted out with the boxes on the grid. So chip, ch. So you'll notice here I've got a C and H making a CH rather than a C and an H separately because this grid represents the written sound, not the letters. So a C and a H makes a CH when they're together. And that's my new learning for today. Look, it's in red. So we remember that. So CHIP, CH. And when I've counted it out, CH, I. So here's the I. CH, I, CH, I, CH, I. Let's use that one. Does that look right? Ch, it, mm, chim. Mm, which one's wrong? That one's wrong. Chip, ch, it. Ah, that's right. Let's have a little bit of a look now at what that looks like in a small group situation. 
Okay. Okay. Let's see if we can make the word say puff. Puff. Oh. Puff. Can you read it to me? Point to the sound. Uh, uh, Good girl. Uh, well done. Puff, we'll just wait for everybody else. Puff. Excellent. Can you read yours? Puff, uh, puff. Excellent. Next person. Can you read yours? Puff, uh, puff. Excellent. Can you read yours? Puff, uh, puff. So I really hope that all of these activities using Rob the Robot for blending and segmenting have given you some inspiration for um, your reception or your kindergarten class or even for using at home. So that you can get straight started straight away there's uh, free slides that we used earlier on and the phonic phoneme frame and also the face for the robot for the cardboard box they're all in a link below in the description. Also, if you're looking, if you're brand new to phonics and you're looking for some phonics training or some phonics planning, there's a link to for some free phonics planning below and also a link to my website where you can find my fab phonics planning book and some fab phonics training. So there are loads and loads of things for you to be able to access. So don't forget, if you've enjoyed today's session, give us a thumbs up and let me know how you get on in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified because I'm back every single Thursday with more phonics top tips, ideas and activities and if you're brand new to phonics and you want a bit of a refresh about how to say the letter sound correspondence and how to say the phonemes correctly then don't forget to go to this video because it gives you all of the phonemic pronunciations of the letter sound and how to teach and review every single letter sound that we teach in reception kindergarten. So until next time, bye for now.